Hey, it's Jared with Gear and Light. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Ada Mini Extreme ISO. This is a live switching device that makes it really, really easy to do live streams, to capture video, and it has a ton of features. So we're gonna go through just the base features here of the deck itself, and then I'm gonna talk about how I'm using it and the different benefits that it has for me as a video creator who also does live streaming, who also helps others do live streaming, and does a lot of video editing. Editing. So a device like this became really appealing to me because I'd been helping some others with some live streams and the devices that I had were just not the greatest. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to talk about the Ada Mini Pro and I'm also going to compare it to the Atomos, uh, the device from Atomos, the Atom X Cast device. And uh, really, you know, that device let me down, which led me down the path of these Blackmagic devices. What really was a turn on for me with a device like this is that it is self-contained you really don't have to use it with any other software and it's very stable and it just works. And so with a device like this, what took me from the Atom Mini Pro to the Extreme ISO was a couple key features and we'll talk about those in this video. But uh, I have four inputs going into it. I can switch between them here. Um, I'm previewing them on a monitor that's behind me. I have uh, three Sony cameras and a GoPro plugged in. The GoPro, I just needed a fourth and the GoPro is here. It's not the greatest shot, but it, hey, you can live stream from a GoPro using a device like this with the appropriate accessories. But with the Atom Mini Extreme ISO, it gives me eight inputs. It gives me the ability to capture and record all eight of those inputs simultaneously to an SSD, which is great. And so, these are more features we're gonna talk about. As I identified some of these features, I thought, wow, this is an all-in-one device and I think it's gonna be what's gonna work for me. So let's talk about the panel itself and then we'll go into how it's worked for live streaming, for capturing uh, uh, several different feeds and what that looks like when I go to the computer, how the whole work flow works. So the device itself has a lot more buttons than I'll ever use because I don't use Blackmagic cameras. This entire row here is all for controlling your cameras. And unless you have cameras that can be controlled in that way, these buttons are all gonna be pretty much useless. They're for camera controls. They'll allow you to control things like gain, focus, the shutter speed, all of that stuff remotely, which is absolutely fantastic, but I can't do that on my cameras. So buttons are useless. Down here, this row, allows me to turn on and off the audio channels. So right now I've got the audio for my main camera turned on and the red light shows me that it's on. And on my preview screen, I can see audio for all of the different four cameras that I have plugged in, but I have this one active, which means if somebody was, if there, this was connected to a live stream uh, or the audio that is also captured to the files that are being saved on the solid state drive, the audio channel is channel one here, camera one. So I have the ability to change and adjust that, including adjust the audio levels here. That's great. Up top, there's the option for two external microphone ins, which I tried to use, but unless you have a really clean audio signal uh, coming from something that's not connected to the same power as the Atom Mini, you're probably gonna have issues. You really need to have good audio coming through. There's gonna be buzz and other nonsense. So I opted just to use the audio that my camera is recording because it's connected to a mic and it's it's good. So I'm not using mic in one or two. We also have headphone jack out for monitoring for your person who is running the switcher. They can get an audio feed right to their ears. That's great because uh, this little guy here, the non-extreme version does not have audio out. It just has uh, audio in and that's it. Uh, if we're looking at the rest of the buttons along the top, um, a lot of those are customizable buttons. If we get all the way over to the right-hand side, we can control our chroma key. So if you're doing a green screen, we can control that here by turning it on and off. We have the record to disc options here, which I'll talk about in a minute. Picture in picture, we've got six programmable macro keys, which can be programmed to do a multitude of things. Um, and those are customizable within the Atom Mini or the Atom software that you install on your computer. 
We also have customizable effects, so fade effects. Right now I just have cut. If I put it on auto and then switch between the two, you can see I've got a nice fade going between my different camera options and I can also choose any of these and make them the default. And then I have my HDMI video output here, which my HDMI video is going out uh, over to uh, a, a screen, which I can see everything for each of these channels, including the four that do not have anything going to it. I'm also getting feedback on the ISO recording option, showing me how long I've been recording for, showing me how much more space I have left on this drive before I'm out of space. So that's good feedback to have. Uh, but this allows me to control my other other video out so that I can see whether I'm getting the program which shows me what everybody else would see or if I'm getting the grid that shows all of the different camera angles uh, and allows me to see the different cameras and the program which is the option that I am utilizing right now. So lots and lots and lots of buttons, but why did I end up with this even though there's so many buttons that I won't end up using? Well, the main thing that made me wanna try this out is the fact that each of these individual camera inputs are being recorded simultaneously to the SSD. And so that means that every feed Without the edits, without anything, every feed is being exported to that drive. I've got four feeds. That means it's recording four video files. It's actually recording eight, but only four of them are being filled with data. I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, but four video feeds are being written to this SSD. And on top of that, a project file for DaVinci Resolve is also being created. So I can take what's on this drive and open it right up in DaVinci Resolve and work on the edit that was already put together as I was switching between these different camera angles. So whether or not there's a fade like that or they're just hard cuts, all of that stuff's gonna be in DaVinci Resolve and I can go and change and manipulate that there rather than if I was using the standard Pro that is not the ISO, so whether it's the, the mini Pro or the Extreme, the Mini Extreme Pro, but without ISO, the non ISO model is just going to record a single file, which is your program out. Your program out is what is sent to program, which is what's sent to the live stream. It's every time you cut, it is showing the cut and it's not showing you anything that is not currently live. And so that get, you get that video file on that drive, which is cool because at least you get a backup, but you're not getting raw outputs of the cameras. I say the word raw, but you're really only getting HD outputs from the camera. You're not getting 4K. This is the challenge for me, is that I'm not getting the 4K outputs from the camera. I wanna capture everything in 4K. I wanna edit it in 4K. I wanna send it to YouTube or wherever in 4K. This video you're watching here is in 4K. But I can't take the exported video from this device that goes to the drive and just leave it be because those files are HD and they're not full 4K. On this particular device, that is the limitation of the video output. So of course, Blackmagic has devices that do allow for 4K output, and I could spend a lot more money and get one of those devices. But right now, this device, it only does HD. So what does that mean? Am I only limited to HD? Well, for productions where you want this to be your video editor, essentially as you're making cuts and changes, you want those uh, to be represented in the video edit, you can then go and open up the project file in DaVinci Resolve and you can replace the files that are on this drive already with the files that are on your cameras. So if you're capturing 4K on all of your cameras, use the files that are on this drive as proxy and just use them for alignment. So it still could be a time saver, even though it's not the best solution. It's still gonna take you a lot of time to replace all those files. The start and stop record time isn't gonna be the same on all these cameras. All these cameras by default don't uh, have time codes, so syncing is gonna be perhaps a little bit of a problem. But if I was in a better environment where I had time code, all of these cameras were capturing 4K, I could take those files and I could basically just easily overwrite in DaVinci Resolve and have a 4K project with minimal work and have all of the cuts, all of the fades, all of the whatevers that you were doing with this device automatically applied in that edit, which would be huge 
for video editing, a, a huge time saver in video editing for live type of performances, meetings, different things like that where you're capturing long period of time and there's a lot of cuts going around through your project, uh, it would be a huge time saver. So for, for me, this is still not a solution for video editing. I can't video edit on this and then spend all of that time syncing up 4K files. I might as well just re-edit the entire project, but it's, it's a step closer. If I was outputting HD, this would be the perfect solution. I could just take the HD file that this outputs, I can upload it, or I can open the project up in DaVinci Resolve. I can add in some titles, I can add in some things, some call to actions, whatever I wanna add in, and, and then the video's great, it's done. But since it's not 4K and it's only HD, that process is gonna take a little bit longer. So where I will end up using this device, of course, is in live streaming situations. So in live streaming, situations where I'm taking multiple cameras and I want to export them over one feed, this is the switcher that I would choose because it's standalone, it's really small, it doesn't take up a whole lot of power, and I can easily switch and do everything that I need to do on this device. I've got an audio output for monitoring, which is great. I've got two HDMI outputs for monitoring so I can see my panel for all of my different camera angles and program, and then if I wanted to have a bigger program screen, I could. I have an HDMI out for that. I've got two USB Type-C ports here, one that I could be connecting to a solid state drive like this, another one I could be running out to a computer to manage the live stream. You can also connect the device over an ethernet cable as well. And so there's lots of potential for a device like this, even though it has more on deck features, more buttons than I would need, it gives me the flexibility that I need so that I can run a successful live stream. Now, the smaller version, which essentially would be the Ada Mini Pro ISO, which is the smaller version, would probably accomplish all the same things that I need. Unless I need more than four video inputs, that smaller device would solve all of my problems. It still produces individual video capture for each of the feeds to the hard drive as a good backup. Uh, while still being a small device, being a standalone device, uh, but what it isn't gonna have, of course, is channels five through eight. So the smaller device would be great for smaller productions. If you have more than four cameras, you definitely wanna go with the larger one. And I do highly recommend the ISO because you can, it's very easy, plug in a solid state drive, record all of those to it, and you have individual feed backups. Backups are awesome and having a backup means if something fails on a camera if something ends up corrupt files end up corrupt on a camera even though it's only hd you at least have that hd as a backup an hd backup is better than no backup at all so the only real wish that i have for a device for this particular device is just that i could have 4k output to the solid state drive if i could go 4k output that would be fantastic it's the only thing that it's missing in my opinion other than that it's a fantastic fantastic device. It's extremely stable and you're not going to run into issues with something like this in a live scenario, even when live streaming for hours on end. So lastly, is this a great uh, solution for somebody who's, who's doing some gaming? Maybe for most people, they're running their cameras directly into a computer using a capture card. They're using OBS uh, or a variation of OBS. This device here is a great deck to have on your desktop to switch between camera angles. You can run all of your camera angles into OBS still just over that USB type C because OBS will recognize this as, a, uh, as an input device essentially, just as I can run this directly into Microsoft Teams, I can run this directly into pretty much any software that will recognize a feed on the computer. And then, of course, utilizing the Atom software, you can also program that to connect as well. Uh, but if you're wanting to run this into something like OBS, very easy to do that. Then you just switch your cameras with this, and then you ha let OBS handle the graphical stuff and, and maybe switching between your gaming screen and taking you completely off the screen. So it just really depends. I think this is a great alternative to having multiple capture cards in a PC. I have tried putting multiple capture cards in a PC before and things get a little sketchy. Uh, trying to add more than two capture cards in a PC requires you to have a very 
very, very powerful PC. And it's not just in having a very powerful graphics card, it's having a CPU processor that can handle that many inbound PCI lanes on the, the, the system itself. You're gonna have to have something with a lot of cores that has a lot of PCI lanes. And so something like this can take multiple cameras, run it out into the computer. Over USB-C as well, you don't even have to run HDMI in. So this solves the problem of having capture cards at all. And then your PC can handle the game and that's it. And so for those of you that are also worried about taxing your PC, you're wanting to use one PC to stream from and play games from, take the issue of taxing your PC by having uh, capture cards and all that stuff and put it into a device like this, bring your video feeds in to the PC just with one simple USB-C cable and that's going to keep things a lot more simple and leave a lot more PC resources left over for gaming. So little caveat there, I, I might not be of interest to you, but I find it interesting because I've tried to do these things in the past. I've overtaxed a PC and ran into system issues and trying to have too many capture cards installed on a PC and then building out an overpowered PC so that I could. This is a solution for something like that as well. So obviously I just scratched the surface of what a device like this is capable of. If you have any questions, ask down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. Obviously I've tried to use this in a little bit of a different way than I think it was probably intended on being used for when it was designed, but I, it's a great product. It's a fantastic stable product. Blackmagic produces some good stuff. So I'll probably end up sticking with the Ada Mini Pro for most things because it's smaller footprint and it accomplishes most of what I am trying to accomplish at this time but the Extreme ISO is great because of the individual file backups and having the ability for eight different video input feeds. So that's gonna do it for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to the channel so you could be notified when I put out new videos, which will include the comparison of this to the Atom X cast from Atomos as well. So subscribe and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.